My name's Molly, and I'm one of the summer interns. Thank you for joining us today on our online campus. Hey, in just a few moments, we're gonna be joining the church for today's service. If you miss joining us in person, you can catch up with past messages by subscribing to the Pathway Church audio podcast and listen there, or catch the entire service on our YouTube channel. God is moving here at Pathway Church, and it is in no small part because of your generosity. The way you honor the Lord with your tithe and your offering, it makes ministry happen all over the city. And we want to say thank you for all that you're doing to advance the gospel. As we bring our tithe and our offering, God promises to bless us. As you do this, it gives the opportunity to share the love and the light and the hope of Jesus right here in our city. Here at Pathway, there's three ways that you can give. There's the comments, we provided a link. You can simply click there, or you can visit us online and through our app. But I wanna encourage you to bring your tithe, bring your offering, let's honor the Lord, and He will bless you and your family. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We love you, Pathway Church. with us this morning.
Jesus this morning, God. We lay everything at your feet this morning, Jesus. Lord, when we sing, we worship you, God, and we ignore everything else around us. Let's sing this out. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
live stories that have proved your faithfulness I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend There is beauty in what I can understand Jesus, it's you Jesus, it's you I believe in the wonder-working God In the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe In the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe too good to not believe, too good to not believe. I can resurrect a man with my own wings, but just the mention of your name can raise the dead. So all the glory to the only one who can. that you have seen with your own eyes. Who has seen God move in their life? You've seen a miracle. You know that he's working. You, let me see your hands. If you know that the Lord is working on your behalf, go ahead and give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Return thanks 
to Him for all that He's done for you. Amen. What an incredible time of worship. Go ahead and grab a seat right where you are. Welcome to Pathway Church. I want to say welcome to our online campus as well if you're joining us online. We're so glad to have you there with us. Go ahead and hit the share button on your feed and invite your friends who might be at home to join you at church this morning. If you're a guest in the house for the first time, we want to say welcome. Can we give our first time guests a hand this morning? Let them know we're glad that they're here. When you came in today, you received a worship guide that looks like this. And inside of your worship guide is your connect card that looks like this. If you're a member or a regular attender, just fill out your name and your email address. But if it is your first time here with us, go ahead and fill out all the information on the front of the card. Pastor Travis has a gift that he'd like to send to you in the mail. On the back of your connect card is a place for some next steps. So check those out. And in just a few moments, the offering baskets will pass by. That's where you can place your completed connect card and your giving envelope in the basket. So make sure you have those ready in just a couple minutes. You're in for a real treat. This this morning we have uh, Pastor Rob Bailey with us here today but before we go any further go ahead and check out what's happening right here at Pathway Church. What is up everyone my name is Gavin Noor and I'm here to tell you the Pathway we have confirmed liftoff. Students prepare to launch August 18th. Three, two, one. Whoa that was weird. Anyways I'm here to tell you what's happening here at Pathway Church. Our Asking for a Friend message series has begun. You ask the questions and we do the answering. Submit your question today and vote on your favorite topics at pathwaychurch.us. Thursday, August 26th and Sunday, August 29th, Pathway Church is having baptisms. If you decided to take this next step in your faith, you can sign up today on the Pathway Church app. When you decided to dedicate your child, you are acknowledging the awesome responsibility that God has given you in raising your child. We at Pathway Church want to help you with that commitment. Sunday, August 15th, we will be hosting a child dedication. You can register today on the Pathway Church app. Beginning Wednesday, August 18th, we're hosting a special three-week Connect class. Learn more about who Pathway Church is, grow in your walk with Christ, and discover your gifts and learn how you can serve with us. Connect class is not just about learning who we are, but who you are, and we can't wait to connect and serve alongside of you. For more information on our upcoming events, head to our social media platforms or our Pathway Church app. Also, be sure to subscribe to our Pathway Church podcast where you can listen to today's message and past sermons whenever and wherever. Thank you for worshiping with us. Here, so glad you're here to worship with us. So glad you're online worshiping with us. And I want to give you an opportunity right now just to continue this spirit of worship through your giving. There are several ways you can do that. You have an envelope you were given on the way in. You can use the envelope to give your gifts and your offerings. Uh, if you're not prepared today, you can just take that envelope home with you and you can uh, drop it in the mail. We've already addressed the envelope and uh, pay for the postage. Uh, you can also download the church app on your smartphone and you can uh, go there and you can give securely through the give link uh, and you can even set up your giving to be re recurring. Also, if you're online, there's a link right there in the comment section. If you'll just click the give there, you can also give that way and you can also text to give, go online. There, there are multiple ways that you can give, but know this, that when you give, it makes a difference. Now, from time to time, we see notes and prayer requests that come in on your Connect card, and some of them say something like, I need God to touch my finances, and I'm struggling financially. Pray, and we pray for those. And you know, right now, Pathway is in a spirit of revival. God is doing something great in our midst, and we're seeing miracles, and God's moving. You know, I got to thinking about that. I think God desires to do a revival in your finances. Amen? God wants you to be blessed so that you can in turn bless others and so that you can bless your family. You can bless the kingdom of God. And I know of no better way to be blessed and to have revival in your finances than to be obedient through your giving. God says, if you will give to me, I will give it back. But I'll give it back, pressed down, shaken together. And the best part is running over. Then he even says in Malachi, I should test me and just see. You want revival in your finances? Then let's be obedient in our giving and see what God will do. And the beauty of it is, is when we all come together and we begin to give and are obedient, man, great things can happen. 
This last several weeks, we've been busy. We had an all-team rally. We back, packed up all the backpacks. Last week, we had kids on our campus, and we were able to bless our community and even go into our schools and take backpacks and be a blessing that way. And even today, at the end of service, we're going to be uh, praying over our kids and our teachers. And it's just incredible to know what God is doing through our students and our kids. And you're a part of that because of your giving. When you give, it makes all this possible. So thank you for your giving. Thank you for being obedient. And thank you for allowing God to do a revival in your finances. Let's pray and ask us to continue blessings on us. Lord, we just come and ask that you would continue to bless us. As we're obedient unto you, and we bring our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings unto you. And we even go above and beyond from time to time, like, like giving for the backpack giveaway and providing the backpacks and supplies. And we know that when we do these things, it adds up and your glory is done. So thank you, Lord, for opportunity to give. Lord, I pray for those who need a revival in their finances, that you would just let them see that if they would just be obedient to you and start somewhere where they are with what they have and that you'll take that and you'll bless it and you'll multiply it and you'll bring true revival in their finances. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be a part of the great ministry here at Pathway Church. We thank you for it and we ask your blessings in Christ's name. Amen. If you're seated on the right hand of a section, there's a basket there uh, at the end of that row. If you'll pick it up, pass it to the left. Good morning, Pathway, Airport Campus, everybody that's joining us online. Come on, welcome to Pathway Church. Just bless everybody that's here today. And while you're at it, aren't you thankful for Jesus? Put an exclamation point. Go ahead and bring that. So good. Hey, listen, today we're kicking off our new message series called Asking for a Friend. This is a message series we used to call You Asked For It, but we thought, you know what? It's nice to let people ask a question and you can upvote that stuff, but if you're asking for a friend, you can ask anything you want. Because, you know, I'm not crazy enough to ask that, but I know a guy. I'm going to put that in there. So we're going to be fielding those questions today. Really quickly, before I tell you what we're doing today, uh, if you would like to submit a question or upvote a question, go to the Pathway Church app. When you get there, you can click just asking for a friend. And then it pulls you over to a series of questions that have already been submitted. There's a lot of questions with a lot of votes. And in real time, if you vote for a question you like, it'll immediately move up over whoever's next. And so, um, you know, here's uh, one question. This is like the second rated, uh, highest rated question. Is the vaccine the beginning stages of the mark of the beast? That's a good question. Somebody asked that. If this is high on the votes, then that's what's gonna get preached about, or we're gonna talk about that in a uh, coming uh, message. Um, here is, Here's uh, one. What should the Christian response to be to someone who keeps bringing up your past mistakes? Good question. Of course, you don't want to ask that yourself. That's clearly someone that's asking for a friend. And so go and submit those. Make sure you vote on that. We're going to have a really great um, series as we're uh, discussing these questions, going straight to the Bible. And we're going to bring this. And I believe that God's going to do something special. To me, this is an important series every year because it allows me to hear from you and then just bring the scriptures right into that. Today, we're asking the question, how do we give our kids the best chance to follow Christ for themselves? And I thought, wow, what better to have than to bring in the expert? I'm so glad to have with us today my friend Rob Bailey. He's the, direct, the international director for youth and Christian education for the entire Church of God denomination. That's about 27,000 churches elected by his peers to run the oversight of 
everything from camps to Winterfest and Winterfest, um, about 20, uh, Thompson Bowling Arena seats about 20,000 people there at University of Tennessee. They fill that place up and do that in cities all across the world. Would you welcome my great friend, Pastor Rob Bailey, as he comes to address this question for us and to bring the word. Love you, what an honor. Hey man, do you love your pastor? Would you let Pastor Travis know that you love and appreciate him so much? <laughs> pastor Travis and Pastor Kelly, you guys are the best of the best. And it is so good to be back at, at Pathway. It has been a long time since I was here. When I was, when I was here last time, I was, I was a lot younger. Not nearly as good looking. Okay. <laughs> hey, I love... <laughs> I love the question and answer series that are going on. What a great way to get questions answered, asking for a friend. And what a great question to start the series off of how do we give our kids the best chance to follow Christ for themselves? Where are all the parents at? If you're a parent, raise your hand. Give yourselves a hand. That's pretty good. You guys are doing good. All right. Better than that, where are the grandparents at? That's what I'm talking about. Grandparents, give yourselves a hand. I, I am the, the proud dad of uh, four kids, and uh, I'm, a, I'm the proud grandpa of four awesome grandkids. And I know you're thinking there's no way they could be that young. Not thinking that? Okay, cool. Uh, well, if I, I will tell you this. If I had known how great having grandkids were, I would think I would have had them first. But kids are incredible. But the, the question that we're beginning with is how do we give our kids the, the best chance to follow Christ for themselves? Who thinks that's a pretty good question? I, I'm so thrilled that that one got, got upvoted and it's an honor to get to, to spend the, the day with you. And I, I want to jump in answering that question, a three-part answer to that very good question question because as parents, that is the most important thing that we do is allow our kids to follow Christ. But the, I want to, number one, I want to encourage you that you are doing it. You've begun the process because one of the most important things you can do is connect your kids uh, to a church like Pathway. If you're glad to be a part of Pathway, would you just give God praise for that? I am so thankful for a church like Pathway in, in Mobile and in, in Mobile County. The reason that's important is because you and your kids kids both need shepherds and under shepherds after God's own heart. Uh, and I'm so thankful for both campuses with, with pastors that, that have our best interests in mind and, and uh, youth pastors and children's pastors and leaders who care after our kids' soul, whose passion is to feed your kids and connect with them. So being a part of this church, I want to encourage you that when the doors are open, do whatever you can to get her. Somebody say amen. And, and for those that are joining us online, thank you for being a part of, of what God is doing uh, online as well. And, and number two is this, it's so important, is that you encourage your kid's friend group to be of a similar faith. Wave your hand if that makes sense. Encourage your friend group, the friend group to be of, of similar faith. And that doesn't mean they can't be friendly to others, but help them to choose wisely who they make the decision to be in a covenant relationship with. For all of the adults that are here, how many of you used to be teenagers? How many of you used to be kids? then you remember what it was like. Hopefully you don't have adolescent Alzheimer's where we get that way sometimes as adults that we forget what it's like to be a kid. We forget what it's like to be a, a teenager. Uh, but it, it's important. And I, I've been in, in youth ministry some way, shape, or form uh, for, for 28 years now, almost 29 years. And, and the one thing is true is this. When it comes to teen ministry, show me your friends. I'll show you your future. You become who you hang out with. How many know that's true? How many look back to things that you did as a teenager and can say, it's probably because the friend group I was hanging out with. Uh, I, I have actually used that quote, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. I've used that for, for 28 years in various ways, shapes, and forms in, in, with, with teen ministry and youth ministry around the world. But I was actually in Paducah, Kentucky, not too long ago, speaking to some prisoners. And it was a room that sat a couple of hundred, and they crowded uh, about 300 uh, 
prisoners into the room, and, and as I, I, I was talking to them, and I told them, that's a quote that I give, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And can I tell you that I've never had a standing ovation quite like that. Never in a church where, where people are, are just absolutely, and some of them with tears streaming down their face, when I asked them, how many are, of you are here because of the decisions you made as a teenager and the groups that you hang out with? And can I tell you that almost every one of them that I spoke with they told me that was their testimony. It was because of the people that they hung out with. So how important is it that we allow our children to make good choices with their friend groups? I want to say it like this. There's a great temptation for our teenagers and the decisions our teenagers make to be made within the confines of what's called groupthink. Have you ever heard of groupthink? Groupthink, it means a consensus is reached without the individual having their own critical thinking or their critical reasoning. It happened because we were in a group. One of the things that I found in statistics will we'll back this up is that almost all adolescent uh, risky behavior, risky behavior meaning everything from driving recklessly to attending wild parties, drug use, alcohol abuse, and, and, and even sexual promiscuity is, is done within social settings. It's done because I was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Especially for teenagers, life happens in groups. Therefore, make sure the groups that your kids are hanging out with and your kids are being social with have made the decision to be going in the same direction. The Apostle Paul uh, to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, what he said, he said like this, uh, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, We've heard that verse, if you've been in church for a while, you've probably heard that verse for a long time. Uh, and it's not just talking about boyfriend, girlfriend. It's not just talking uh, about who you are married to, although it's very important that your spouse and you are on the same uh, spiritual journey. It's not just talking about marriage relationships. It's actually talking about relationships, it, wanting to be sure you're going in the same direction. And thirdly, and, and I actually saved the best for last, and I want you to really lean in on this and, and hear what I'm saying. If you want your kids to make a decision for, to follow Christ for themselves as parents and as grandparents, it is extremely important that you set a spiritual atmosphere in your home. It's important what, what you do within your home. The norm, the habit should be prayer and devotion and worship. Does that make sense to anybody? Uh, and, and it's so incredible to bring your family to church, so incredible to bring your family to children's church and, and to youth group and to functions like youth camp and, and winter fest and kid fest and so many events that the church of God does. And church attendance really should be habitual. When the doors are open, you should be here. If you can't be here in person, you, you jump in online like those of you that on our, on our online campus have. Do what you can to be in the presence with, with other people. But listen, attending church, it, it can't be the only time that Jesus is mentioned. It's, it's not enough. Um, how many of you like to eat? We're in Mobile, Alabama. Let me ask you, how many of you like to eat? We're church of God. How many of you like to eat? It's the only thing we can do, we can eat. But how, how many of you eat more than once a day? How many eat more than once a week? Well, of course we do. If we only eat once a week, we become malnourished. If we only eat the good stuff once a week, what we end up doing is we end up consuming other things that we're not supposed to be uh, consuming. And so it is so important to be a part of a, of a church-like pathway, but it's even more important that you take the things that happen at pathway and you use those as a supplement for the foundation that you are building at home. The daily consumption of prayer has to happen at home. It's the habit that you teach your kids how to do. It, it's not about do what I say and not what I do, but you're leading your family in prayer. Does that make sense? Not only is, is your, your home become a house of prayer, but a place where the Bible is, is read and read habitually. Not only read, uh, but it's read and then meditated on so we can be sure that we're giving the Holy Spirit time to take those incredible life-giving words to change our hearts. Not only prayer and, and reading and meditating on the Scripture, but a place of worship a place of worship where your kids are not just worshiping when they come to church, but they're worshiping in your home and you're leading your family in daily and nightly devotion. 
That that becomes a habit that, that when they are old, they don't depart from it because it's something that has been instilled in them while they are young. The absolute best chance for your kids to follow Jesus for themselves. Does that make sense? Amen. One more time. Let me just say what an honor it is to get a chance to be here. Pastor Travis, thank you for this privilege. You and, 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 and Pastor Kelly are just such choice uh, servants of the Lord. We thank you for your leadership both in, in this church in, in Mobile and then also in, in the International Church of God on the council. We just thank you for your leadership and, and for what God is using you to do. And it's so incredible. Whether you are, have joined us here at the Moffitt campus or at the airport campus or watching online, uh, just thanks for allowing me to spend the day with you. And I'm thankful what God is, is doing in, in Mobile. Uh, as we're talking about our kids and we're talking about giving our kids the best chance to follow Christ for themselves, my mind went to what the Apostle Paul was talking about to the church at Philippi. I want everybody to say the good life. Wave at me if you'd like to have a good life. I don't mean just a good life. I mean the good life. I believe uh, that that's what we are, are wanting to do. And, and as Paul writes to this church at Philippi, chapter 3, verse 12, what he says is this. He says, not that I have already obtained all this uh, or I've already arrived at my goal, but he says this, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. What he's saying is there's a reason that Jesus chose me. There's a reason uh, that, that Jesus entered into my life. And he says, I want to find that reason. I, I'm, I'm pressing forward to arrive at that goal to find out why Jesus took hold of me. Uh, Paul goes on in verse 13, and, and he says this. He says, brothers and sisters, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I've not arrived. One verse that said, I've not, I don't count myself to have apprehended. But then he says, but one thing I do. As I read this scripture, I see Paul and I see him lifting up a finger. One thing. When you do that, when you lift up your fingers, you say one thing. And, and in my mind, and I, I, one thing I do, I see the apostle Paul pointing behind him. And, and he says this, one thing I do, one way to find that good life, one thing I do. And I see him pointing behind me. He says, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what's Ahead, He continues that strain of thought and he says, I press on, I press on, I press on, I press on for the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. One thing I do. We bow your heads, let's ask God to bless us. Father, we love you today. And God, so thankful for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. And God, the ability that you've given to us to be in your presence, we do not count that lightly. God, we are so grateful for who you are. We're grateful, God, for what you mean in our lives. And God, we're grateful to be a part of this fellowship of the unashamed, to be a part of, of Pathway Church. God, I thank you for what you're doing in this church, in this city, in our community. God, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, God, that your word says of itself it will never return void. That, that I, I pray, God, that word that's been spoken would, would find a, a place in our heart, a seed that's planted and would grow into a mighty tree of faith. God, I pray blessings on every man, every woman, every young person. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and praise. Everybody said amen. Somebody say the good life. You know, at the end of the day, there's so many voices that are always clamoring to be heard. Uh, it, I think one of the largest uh, sections in a bookstore is the self-help section. All the podcasts that are talking about how to live a better life. But at the end of the day, the thing that I've found is what matters most is what Jesus said. Amen? And, and what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, he says this. He said, the thief comes not but for to steal and kill and destroy. He continues and says, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus wants to give that good Life. I, I love putting that in a modern day dialect when, when Jesus would have said, the reason that I have come is for you to have the good life. I was graduating high school. It seemed like just a few days ago. It was actually 1990. Class of 90, strong and mighty. And in, in, but in 1990 at, at Cleveland, anybody else graduated in 1990? Anybody else? The best year ever? Got a few? Okay, I heard a woo -hoo. 
But in, in 1990, as all of the seniors and I were preparing to graduate, we, we gathered in what was known as the Cleveland High Dome. And, and in, it's been torn down now, kind of broke my heart. But in the dome that we gathered in, we gathered together for our graduation speech. And I don't know who it was that spoke, but the speech was in incredible, one of the greatest and, and most motivating speeches that I've ever heard. I, I came to know it later as the Carpe Diem speech. Have you ever heard anything like that? Carpe Diem, Latin, means seize the day. And, and this speech that was given was so awesome. I remember it like it was yesterday, so motivating, so exciting. We were all sitting on the edge of our seat as the speaker was saying things like, make every day count. It's awesome. Grab the bull by the horns. Uh, grasp life with both hands. It was awesome. And then he said, go for the gusto. And we all stood up and, and clapped hands. We actually, we actually gave a standing ovation. I left the auditorium looking for a bull to grab. It's probably a really good thing that I didn't find one. Because if I'd have grabbed it, uh, now what? I, I got a bull by the horns. What am I supposed to do now? I'm, I'm going for the gusto. But the truth is, I didn't even know the definition of the word. What's a gusto? I don't know. I was just looking for something that grasped with, with both hands. But the truth is, I didn't know how. We gave a standing ovation. We, we clapped our hands. We were ready to go do something. We just didn't know what that something was. The truth is, even though we gave a standing ovation, we left the auditorium pretty much the same way that we walked in. There weren't really any answers. Carpe diem, seize the day. Woo! But how? Live a good life. Yes, that's what we want. Can I tell you there are so many songs with that word, living a good life, from, from uh, Tony Bennett to Weezer to even Kanye West. Everybody wants to live a good life, but nobody actually says how. And I want it for a few moments. I want to just go back to that thought of living a good life, and I want to revisit that text, but I want to do it is what's the secret for living a good life, and what's the secret for being in an environment where our kids will make decisions to follow Christ for themselves? In fact, let's read it as if Paul was answering that question of how do we live that type of life. And what Paul said in Philippians 3.14, he says this, I press on. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What I want to share with you today is there is a prize to be won. And that prize has nothing to do with actually what's happening on earth. But this is in preparation to a kingdom that is coming. Somebody say amen if you believe it. Here's the challenge. The challenge this morning is to, to find what I think Paul was talking about in, in living the good life. Number one is this, find your purpose. Can I tell you that every one of us and every one of us that have kids and grandkids, our goal is to let those kids know what their purpose is, to find their purpose. Can I tell you that there's a purpose for your life? A very familiar passage of scripture is found in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. If you've been in church for a long time, I'm almost guaranteeing you've heard that verse. And that verse where, where God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to, to prosper you and, and not to harm you. But I want us to be careful that our familiarity of, of that verse is not breed contempt and we just skip right past it to find something new, a new revelation. Because I want you just to lean in and think about what I just said. The God of heaven and earth, the God who spoke everything into existence, the master creator of everything knows who you are and has a plan for your life. Isn't that awesome? He says, I have a plan for you, a plan to prosper you, to, to not to harm you. And, and the question that I want to ask is, what is that purpose? What is that, that plan? What's your primary purpose? Can I tell you that every one of us in this room, that there are things that we do, but what you do is not necessarily who you are? But what is your purpose? What is your, your primary purpose? I, I grabbed the pen in, in, in the back room, and it, it made me kind of uh, wonder a, a couple of things. I'll get to that in a second. But if, if I were to ask you, What's your primary purpose? There'd be some young people that are in the room that would answer, my primary purpose is to be a good student. There might be a young man that would say, my primary purpose is to be a good son. A young lady might say, I, I want to be a good daughter. 
that there'd be some, some awesome moms that would say, I want to be a good mother, some awesome dads that say, I, I want to be a good father. My primary purpose is to be a provider, to be a protector. There, there might be some that say, I, I want to make money, make friends, be successful. I want a lot of followers on Instagram. I don't know what you might say your purpose is, but there'd be a lot of them. The interesting thing is this, some of those answers to that question of what's your purpose, some of them are very good answers. But I didn't just say, what is it that you want to do or what is it that you want to be? What I said is, what is your primary purpose? Some of you are looking at this pen in my hand. I grabbed it from the back room. What is the primary purpose of this ink pen? Hey, all right, <laughs> you won. <laughs> that's a, that's exa- the primary purpose of this ink pen is to write, but I can use it for a lot of things. I've been pointing at you with it for the last few minutes. But this primary purpose of this pen is not a pointer. I, I can use this pen to, to scratch something that itches. But the, the designer of this pen, that's not what it was created for. Uh, if the wind is blowing or you're in a room with a fan or the AC is turned up and it's blowing papers off of your desk, you can take this pen and use it as a paperweight. Yet that's not what its primary purpose is. I have two daughters. I've seen both of them use ink pens to hold their hair up in, in like a, a, an incredible magical thing that women can do with pens. Yet that's not the primary purpose of a pen. And I'm not saying you should do it right now, but if you Google purposes of an ink pen or what can an ink, a Bic pen do? Somebody took the time to list 100 different things that a Bic pen can do. There's some pretty weird things out there that people do with pens. Don't, you know, hold that on me. But it would be a ridiculous argument to suggest at any time in place or space that the primary purpose of a pen is for anything other than for, say it with me, Writing, the, 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 the master creator of a pen said, I want something that will let them write regardless of what else they can do with it. Listen, what I want to tell you from my heart today is that the creator of heaven and earth and your master creator has created you for a primary purpose. And until you find your primary purpose, your life will not have the meaning that your life needs to have Our life don't have real meaning until we know what our purpose is, until we find the reason for our existence. And Paul actually states the reason for his existence in Philippians chapter 3, the same to the same church, the same letter, the same chapter, just a couple of verses before our text, what Paul says in Philippians 3.10, he says this, I exist that that I may know him, that I may know Jesus and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, uh, being conformed to his death. Can I tell you, Pathway Church, that what Paul was saying is that my reason for existence, my purpose, my primary purpose is to know Jesus. If we want our kids to be able to follow Jesus for themselves, then they need to know that their primary purpose is not to make the cheerleading team that their primary purpose is, is not to make the travel ball team, that, they, that they're not just a, 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 that they're not a ball player who happens to be a Christian, but they are a Christian who happens to do other things. The prim- Come on, give God praise then. The primary purpose that we have is to know Jesus. That becomes the foundation of everything that we are is to know him. And I want to I challenge all of us. I want to challenge myself again to let Jesus be the, the center of my life. Not, not just a part of, of what I do, but to be the center of who I am. Not a spoke on my will, but the hub, the center that everything else revolves around is knowing Jesus and making Jesus known. I, I love that thought of finding our purpose. And I love the fact that that this church is going so hard after God, doing whatever you can do to make Jesus more famous. I love what what God is doing in you and through you, both individually and corporately. I want to tell you, my heart leapt inside of me as I saw the backpacks that are being done and given in the community and everything else that's being done to let Jesus be made known. That is our purpose to know Jesus and make him known in this city. Everything else that we do, can I tell you, is secondary. Secondly, to live that good life. Not only do we find our purpose, but, but secondly, we have to forget our past. Raise your hand if you have a past. Everybody should have your hand up. 
We all have a past. But I tell you, as we are forgetting our past, what I see is I, I see two different things in our past that we have to forget. Number one, we have to forget the prides of our past. And secondly, we forget the pains. As musicians are coming, I'm, I'm bringing this to a close. I'm, I'm, I stand before you. I already told you I graduated in 1990. I'm 49 years old. I'm a dad and I'm a grandpa. I love life. But can you imagine when Pastor Travis introduced me and, and, and you saw me take the stage? Can you imagine if I was still wearing my letterman's jacket from Cleveland High School? Imagine if I came strolling here with my letterman's jacket and it does fit if you were wondering. Imagine my letterman's jacket and imagine I still had my wrestling patch on the one sleeve and my, my football patch on the other sleeve and I had all those other things that were, were on there and, and I was still just loving telling you all about how great high school was. Would you not think something's wrong with me? Let me show you the back of my jacket. It's got, <laughs> no, oh my, there's a reason today I'm wearing my wedding band and not my class ring. There's a reason. The reason why is I've made a conscious decision that no matter how great the prides of my past were, I have to move forward. One thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what's ahead. Now, I've got some great memories from my past. I, I smile at some of the things that used to happen in my past. I've got some, I, I love kindergarten. Anybody else? <laughs> no stress. Sit on a rug, play blocks, hear a book, eat glue. It's a great time. I, I love elementary school. Are you kidding me? I get to come to school, eat lunch in, in, in my little Superman lunchbox, go to recess. What better times could there be? Yet if I was still showing up to the office today, wanting to take a nap, actually doesn't sound too terribly bad if I'm being honest but still bringing lunch in my lunch box and still got my little juice box. I mean, th th as great as it was to be able to live effectively today, I forget the prides of my past. I want to be honest with you. I don't mean to burst anybody's bubble or rain on anybody's parade, but gas will probably never be a dollar again. The Mary Tyler Moore show will never be on primetime. The kids are like, who? <laughs> President Ronald Reagan, God bless him, has gone on to his reward. I could go on and on, but at some point, we just have to say the past is the, is the past. But what I'm going to share with you is, is regardless of all the prides of your past, as you forget them, you're not erasing the memory. I still remember how great things were. And it seems like the older that I get, the better at sports I used to be. The older that I get, the better things used to be. The older that we get, yeah. As, as I, when we forget the past, we're not erasing the memory. I still remember the good times. The, the memories are not erased. I've just made a decision that the prides of my past will not control my today. I'll not be controlled today by anything that happened in the past. Today is a new day. God said, I'm making everything new. I've not lost my ability to recall, but I refuse to let it dominate my existence. The glory days. Remember that song? The glory days of your past won't dictate and control your today. For, for the abundant life of today, not only do we have to forget the prides of our past, but I said there was a second part. And as difficult and as challenging as it is to forget the prides of our past, it's even harder sometimes to forget the pains, right? Anybody ever experienced heartache before? Has anybody ever experienced brokenness before? When you think of your past, maybe it's not the shiny, happy memories. Maybe there's some tough things you had to face. I know in this room, I know at airport campus, I know there's some people gathered around watching on your phones or your devices or your laptop. And your mind drifts off to your past and there's nothing but pain. I also know there's some people in this room that have a past that you're not very proud of. 
some things maybe you've done that have caused pain in other people. Maybe in your past you've hurt people. Maybe in the past you've been hurt by people. The past has caused great pain. As we think about the the author of this letter, the Apostle Paul, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, breathed on, we see Paul in his life, and we know that in his past, most of our past won't hold a candle to his. He had hurt people severely, tortured Christians. With great fervor, he had seen Christians martyred. In fact, when Paul, before his name was Paul, was Saul, he, he was this religious fervor, religious zealot, Pharisee, Roman citizen, Jew of Jews, Hebrew of, of Hebrews, that, that would hold the coats of those who were stoning Christians. And Jesus himself confronted Paul on the the side of the Damascus road and said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You may know the story. Paul is gloriously saved. Saul is saved, changed to Paul, becomes the author of two-thirds of the New Testament, general in the faith, but his pain was not over. In fact, in many ways, his pain just began because during that time in his life, he was lied to, he was betrayed, that there was a thorn in his side. He was beaten unmercifully. He was imprisoned over and over again, shipwrecked, snake been hurt and pain in his past, yet he had to make a decision. He's faced with a choice. I'm either going to dwell on my mistakes, I'm going to dwell on the mistakes of others that have hurt me, or I'm going to make a decision to say one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what's ahead. I press on. In Pathway Church, just like Paul, we have a choice to make. Now, maybe you're here and, and you have a very bad past. Maybe you're here and you are struggling with pain. Maybe you suffered through the abuse of a family member, someone who was supposed to protect you, someone who was supposed to make sure nothing bad happened. And they were the ones who instilled pain. If that's your story, my heart breaks for you. And I cry with you. That's my story too. But what you and I have to do is we have to make a decision about our past to forget our past. These memories that just keep coming back, keep resurfacing, keep resurrecting, that are haunting us and keeping us from living that full life. What we have to do with all the gumption we can muster, with all the strength from our soul is raise up our finger and through the tears streaming down our face saying, one thing I do, forgetting what's behind. And one more time, I want to tell you, forgetting is not erasing the memory. We're just making a decision that says that bad memory, that hurt, that pain will not be the thing that dictates the rest of my life. And in Jesus' name, it's time to surrender your past to God, to give him truly your pain. The Bible says to cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for us to give it to Jesus. If you're here this morning and you brought pain with you and the pain is just with you dragging everywhere that you go I'm not telling you as I tell you to forget it I'm not telling you to ignore it I'm not telling you to hide it I'm not telling you to suppress the memories that doesn't work I'm not telling you to pretend it didn't happen what I'm telling you is to deal with it once and for all in Jesus name Give that pain of your past to Jesus. Lay it at his feet and get the healing that you need. It is not God's will that we be bound by our past. Forgetting is not erasing, but moving on. In fact, what if God could use that part of your story? What if God could use that part of your journey? What if God could use your pain to heal others? Have you ever thought about that? 
that what, what if in the process of God healing you from your brokenness, God could use you to help soothe the hurting and the pain of somebody else? That's God's will. God did not cause the pain. But I want to tell you, God can use it. How do you know that, Rob? How I know it is this. Every opportunity that I get to talk to somebody that's been hurt, I can share my story with them and talk to them about what God has done through me and to me, in me and for me. Can I tell you what the Bible says? The Bible says that all things, somebody say all, not just some, not just most, not just the good things, but that all things work together good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. God did not cause any pain that we have, but God can use. I want to share with you this. Your past may have hurt you like crazy, but your past cannot hurt you anymore. Give it to the Lord. Move on and get recovery from your hurt. Paul said this, forgetting what's behind The challenge this morning, the challenge today is to not allow your past to be the thing that defines you. Whether it's the pride of of who you used to be, what you used to do, or the pain of what you did or what was done to you, don't let your past be the thing that defines you. That's not who you are. God has great things in store for you. Paul said, one thing I do, forgetting what's behind. Listen, if you're a parent, your kids are going to mess up. Amen. That They're going to do some things that, that they're not proud of. Walk with them. Talk with them. Share with them. That in the same way that your mistakes don't define you, their mistakes don't define them. That you know that sometimes before they ever have met who God is, they attribute who they see in you to who they see in him. Their, their earthly father, their earthly mother, if they haven't met God yet, sometimes they take that same attribute. What would happen if we could also be people of grace? What would happen if we could parent with mercy? I don't mean that we wink at sin. I don't, I don't mean that we just dismissed it. But, but what if we use those moments as teachable moments? What if we share with them from our hearts, not just make them think how perfect that we were as kids because we weren't. I wasn't, were you? But that, that, that little place in their life, that little blip in the radar of their life, that small little thing, how God can take that, can forgive it, can change their hearts, can change their lives. How about we offer grace and mercy to our kids to live that good life? Find your purpose. Forget your past. And lastly, would you stand to your feet with me? We face our present. Paul said, forgetting what's behind, straining toward what's ahead. That's where we are. We're in the present. Sometimes the enemy works so hard of continually bringing up your past that it binds you. It handcuffs you. It shackles you. And you can't live in your present because all we're doing is just rehearsing our past. Did you know that sometimes he does the opposite? Sometimes he, 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 he makes us so anxious and fearful and nervous about the future that we can't live fully in our present. What I love about our God, our God is not bound by time or space. Our, our, our God is omniscient and our God is, is omnipresent and our God is, is powerful. Our, our God is omnipotent. 
omnipotent. Our God is all things to all people. And this God is already in the future that you're worried about. So don't worry about the future. Don't worry uh, about what's happening later. Live in the now. Live in the, the moment. That's where we are right now. And we're going to pray. There's some people that are in this room, some people that are watching the airport campus, some people that are watching online that you're saying, I'm, I'm struggling right now with my purpose. I'm struggling to know what I'm doing here, what I'm doing. I don't like the job that I have. I don't like the relationships that I'm in. What is my purpose? One more time, your purpose more than anything else is to know Jesus, to put Jesus in the center of your life. And can I tell you that when we seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, everything else will be added. Let him move into the center of your life to know him. There's some here today that are bound by your past. So bound by the prides of your past, you're not living in the moment. So bound and caught up by the pains of your past that every time you think you're about to break loose, you're just reminded of how it used to be others that are just bound by anxiety and fear. You feel the world is, is crashing down. Can I tell you all of your cares? All of your anxieties, all of your fears, they are to be given to Jesus. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? We're going to pray. And that there's nobody in this room that, that's here to judge anybody. And every one of us, it's level at the foot of the cross. There's only one that was perfect. His name is Jesus. But if you're here today and there are things that you are facing, can I tell you that you are not alone, but you are in a room of people that love you, that care about you, that desire to walk in community and walk in covenant with you. If you're here today and there are things that you're just uncertain about, you're facing uncertainty, would you just slip up your hand today? There's some things that you need God to do. God bless you. Hands are going up all over the place. If you're here today, you're just, there's some questions that you just don't have the answer to and it's causing stress. Would you lift up your hand some questions? If you're here today and there's pain that you brought into this room with you, pain that you take it with you everywhere that you go, lift up your hand if you're facing pain in your life. It keeps you up at night. It wakes you up early in the morning. You're having trouble with relationships because of pain. You're facing heartache. Would you slip up your hand today? God loves you, and we serve a God who cares about you. We serve a God that specializes in mending broken hearts. If you're here today and there's sin in your life, but you feel a conviction of the Holy Spirit, you're saying, I'm, I want to get things right with God. Today is my day to get things right. Would you slip up your hand and you say, there's some things in my life that aren't pleasing to God. Lift up your hand. We're not here to judge you. We're here to love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're facing addictions, we serve a God that can break every chain. If you're facing habits, we serve a God that will walk with you every step of the way. And the God of the present is here to meet you one thing I do, Paul said, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what's ahead. Would you do something all over this house? Would you just lift up both hands? This is the international sign of surrender. If you're watching at home, just take a moment, lift up your hands. If you're at the airport campus, lift up your hands. Let's just approach the throne. Heavenly Father, we love you today. God, we take a moment just to, just to worship you, to thank you, God, for your blessings in our life, for never leaving us, for never forsaking us, God, for every promise that's in your word that's yes and amen. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your mercy. That when we ask you to forgive us, you always 
do for providing a way of escape, for providing a great way of salvation, the only way of salvation through Jesus. I thank you, God, that your calling on our life is to live abundantly, to live life that's pleasing to you. And I pray for every young person that's in this house that's about to start school, every, every adult, every young adult, God, every mom, dad, grandparent, all of us. I, I ask God that, that we would yearn to know you, that God with passion, with passion to know you in your life, in your death, uh, in, in your suffering, God, to know you in your resurrection. God, I pray for my friends that knowing you, knowing you, God, through Jesus would be our primary purpose. God, I, I pray that all of us would, would be able to, to walk in the present, God, forgetting the prides of our past, forgetting the pains of, of our past, not, not being so anxious for, for what the future holds that we don't live in the moment of, of who you're calling us to be and what you're calling us to do. God is... As we ask you to forgive us, I thank you that you always do through the blood of Jesus. We get remission of sin. And God, I, I pray that as we experience your forgiveness, as we ask you for forgiveness, as we experience your mercy and grace, get God, that we would be people of grace, that we would extend grace to those that have hurt us, that as we receive your mercy in our lives, I pray that we would be agents of mercy for others to forgive those that have hurt us, to ask forgiveness of those that we've hurt. God, I pray lastly that we would live life to the fullest, that we would live life, live like you live, that we would love like you loved, and that we would live that good life, that our kids would live that good life that our kids would come to know you at a young age as the author and as the finisher of their faith. In everything we do, God, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Aren't you thankful for the Lord? Would you guys bless Pastor Rob for his ministry here today? so thankful. Now, part of this morning was for us to know and to do the best we can do, the best we can do as parents, as people, that the children in our life would grow to know the Lord for themselves. But aren't you glad that God doesn't leave us on our own to do this work on our own, that we do everything we know to do. And then after we've done all that we can do, then God does what only he can do. Aren't you glad for the miraculous? Aren't you glad for God's strong work in us? You know, Wednesday night, we had night of worship and man, what an incredible night. Did you enjoy night of worship? It's amazing. And the whole night, the theme was miracles. We talked about the miracles of the Lord and we celebrated all kinds of wonderful miracles like Pastor Kyle and Carianna Grizzard, they're gonna have a baby, so awesome. And, and we celebrated God's touch on Rhonda Doherty's life and healing her of cancer. Same thing for Sharman Zellers. And for 45 years, she has battled cancer. And just recently, the doctors even said, there's not even a trace of cancer in her body. And we looked at Chris Powell, who God had delivered him. And Alex Scott delivered her. And now they're functioning and uh, ministry and, and, and doing so well in life. And just all of the many things that the Lord did. You know, we're praying for more miracles today. We're lifting up every single kid in our church today. They're all getting ready to go to school. Look at these beautiful kids over here uh, lined up on the walls. If you love our kids at Pathway Church, would you just bless them and our, our kids' workers? So here's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna pray for each of these kids. Usually what we do, we have all the kids on the stage at the same time today. We're just gonna walk them across the stage. I'm gonna anoint them with oil. We're gonna mark these kids. We're gonna remind them that the Holy Spirit of God resides in their life. And we're praying big prayers. We're praying that our children will be like the three Hebrew children. They'll stand head and shoulders above all of the Babylonians, all the other people. 
We're going to pray that God prospers them and keeps them in health and, and surrounds them with the right friends and raises up some champions for God right here in the middle of Mobile. Is that a good prayer? So we've got some of our pastors and leaders coming and and so we're going to anoint these kids and our kids uh, leaders are going to bring them across. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to pray with me. So let me just look at you in the eye really good. Jared, I want you to stretch your hands forward. Everybody else is going to join you in doing this. And then you're going to pray for these kids as if they were your kids and as if you were on the stage. Jared, listen to me really good. Don't bring some jacked up little sorry prayer, okay? These are world changers. And they need the Holy Spirit of God to fuel them in this next step of their journey. Alan, don't bring some sorry prayer in here. I need some spirit-filled men and women of God that will call out to the Lord and ask God to do something strong in us. Is that a good idea? Are you guys on board? Why don't you stretch this, your hands this way? And we're gonna pray for these kids. Join me in praying right now. Father, right now, I pray that you would touch these kids as they come. I pray that you would minister to them today. Father, you would anoint them for your purpose and your calling. Father, as they step into school right now, I pray that you would give them everything that they need. Father, you would anoint them right now for the first grade, for all of their classes. Father, for their parents, Lord. Father, in all they do. Father, touch Chandler right now. Touch this sweet girl, Lord minister to her father thank you jesus lord i pray that you would touch this girl and when your father i pray thank you right now father for harper thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus father touch our kids touch this young man father in the name of jesus this precious girl lord i pray that she steps into school as these kids step into school right now father that you would put your hand on them and you would anoint them. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're asking that as they study and prepare for school, Father, you'd help them to retain the work that they study. Father, you have blessed them and prospered them. Father, help them to be stronger than what they are. Father, because they don't go in their might only, they go in your might as well, God. Father, your strength and your goodness on them right now, Father. Lord, I pray that you would surround them with friends that love them. Father, and strong, build them up. And Father, they would also be a blessing for the kids that are around them. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you bless Levi right now. Father, your hand and your mighty anointing on his life, Lord. Thank you for him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, your touch and your goodness. Lord, I pray that this year in 21, they wouldn't just make it, but I pray that they would thrive. And Father, they would rise. And they would make their mark, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you right now. Our junior high and high school, wherever you are, if you just come on around and you guys stretch your hands on out this way come and join me right now lord, bless you. Bless lord touch this sweet girl right here lord thank you thank you for hannah lord thank you for courtney johnson father i pray that you have make your strong vessel in your hands father touch blake right now strong and mighty in you father thank you for mckenna for your goodness in jesus name i pray that you would continue your strong work father that our junior high schools our senior high schools but would be overrun by people that love you and are called by you and marked by you father in jesus name father bless their teachers that they would be in their class father their teachers would be stronger and their their classmates would be stronger lord thank you for your good work father i pray you bless them as they do sports extracurricular work father i thank you for your good touch and your good work in jesus name father we love you if you're in college would you just raise your hand up right where you are i want to pray for you right now father thank you for your good work and your people father i pray that you administer father whether it's a freshman if it's uh, graduate degrees whatever it is that that father we would be used for your purpose we'd be strong in your hand we'll thank you for it father thank you that this year is a good year and this year is a strong year we honor you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let me ask you, are there any, are there any teachers?
Anyone that works in public schools, private schools, home schools, raise your hand. We have a gift that we want to put in your hands. Keep your hands raised. And we have some people that are bringing some gifts to you right now. And while they're doing that, I just want to say thank you for being heroes in our community. Pathway, would you bless our teachers and our education workers that are here in the church? Thank you for how you love. Thank you for how you serve. Thank you for your preparation. Thank you for stretching a dollar and making it go a little farther to take care of our kids. We honor you and we bless you. Is there anybody else? Did I miss anybody? Right over here, I got somebody here. Anybody else? Right here now. If you would, just keep your hands raised. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pray for our teachers. Father, as we go into this school year, I pray that you would bless our teachers. Father, the things that come in their classrooms, the things that come in their schools. Father, the things that come in their cafeterias that our kids are battling with. Father, I pray that their very presence would cause the enemy to tremble. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God working in our teachers would change our schools. Lord, we pray for revival in our school. We pray for Jesus in our school. We pray that you would do a strong work. Father, we thank you for these ministers of the gospel that have taken their life and placed it into education. I pray that you would move and you would do a powerful work, Lord. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on all over this house. Let's bless the Lord and let's return thanks to the Lord right now. benediction church is not dismissed but you are deployed today in jesus name amen let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O oh lord my strength and my redeemer amen god bless you we'll see you next week what an amazing service we've had today if you love today's message you won't want to miss next week if you've enjoyed today's service take a moment to share it with a friend or two by sharing the link to the service with them you never know what eternal impact a simple share like that will have on somebody. Remember, you can always give online through our app, on our website, or by texting GIVE to 251-237-8667. We love you, Pathway Church, and have a great week.